Welcome guys and gals to Cal TV's only spot for sports bickering. My name's Dan Fiedler. And I'm Daphne Pepinitas. And this is Back. And Forth. Our first story of the day, the Cal men's basketball team lost to then number 9 Stanford this past Sunday. This weekend, the Bears will host Washington and Washington State. So Dan, can the Bears pull off the upset and sweep the Washington schools again? I got bad news for you, Daphne. I don't see the Bears repeating their sweep of the Washington schools, and it's because of the Cougars. I mean, last time, Ryan Anderson had to have 27 points, and they still needed Washington State to miss at the end. And Washington State has a phenomenal road record. They're 9-2 and two on the season. I just don't see them winning on Thursday night. I kind of see what you mean, Dan, but the thing is, the only way I would give the Bears any kind of chance is because they've had some random victories, you know? They beat Washington State, they beat USC, they beat Arizona State. Those are some pretty quality teams. I mean, we can definitely agree on Washington State at the very least. So these kind of random wins, they kind of seem to show up at the last minute. It's kind of like at the end of last season when they beat Oregon at the end of the season and then actually beat UCLA in the tournament. So they can pull off these kind of random I, I wins, I see what you you're know? saying, but uh, I think Washington State, with their tournament hopes lingering so high, uh, they're really going to clamp down. I think that they sort of had a little bit of a glaze in their eyes when they played at Pullman last um, well, Washington State's in the game. tournament, right? Well, I mean, they're in the tournament, but they're trying to get the best spot that they can. I they think they're really going to clamp down. They know the teams that they need to beat, and they're going to beat them on this uh, on Thursday night. Next topic, Tyson's punch-out. Cal baseball star Tyson Ross was the Pac-10 player of the week after his performance against Kansas State this past weekend. Ross recorded five innings pitched with a hit, a run, a walk, and seven strikeouts. This coming after a phenomenal 2007 summer season with Team USA in which he posted a 4-1 record with a 0.82 ERA and just over 43 innings pitched. So, Daphne, the question is, we know Tyson is the man, but how far can the Bears run his golden arm? Dan, I don't think that the Cal baseball team can get too far with just Tyson Ross alone. The team is relatively mediocre at this point. He is a phenomenal pitcher. It's the rest of the team that's the problem. He had about a record of about 500 last year, and I think the reason for that was the rest of the team. They couldn't score the runs for him. That's why he couldn't get the wins. He was doing a great job pitching. His ERA was somewhere around 2.71. I know, I know. That's true, but you really can't underestimate the value of a top-notch pitcher in any sort of baseball league. Uh, just by the nature of the way baseball is played, when you have an ace pitcher who is, you know, almost certainly going to get you a win, and you play him in the first game, that really puts doubt into the mind of your opposition, because now they're always playing from behind. And I think this Cal baseball team is good enough to be able to keep a lead when they're playing ahead, especially in series play. So I think that just by one pitcher, they're going to be able to go pretty far. Back to men's basketball now. After Indiana head coach Kelvin Sampson took a $750,000 buyout to leave the school, the Hoosiers pulled off two narrow wins over bottom of the barrel Northwestern and mediocre Ohio State. So Dan, given the upheaval that the team is in, how deep can this team go into the tournament? I think we have seen so far in these past two games the worst that Indiana is going to play all season. I know with any loss of a coach or a player, something like that, the team is initially going to take a dip in their morale, but they're going to come surging right back up. I think Indiana might actually become a better team. It's going to make it so that, that this sport is all about the players and not just about the coach. See, I don't know if it's going to make them a better team, though, Dan, because these kids were really, really attached to Kelvin Sampson. One of them said, you know, we miss him so much. He was more like our father. Father. Right. They all wrote his initials on their shoes for their first game back against That's Northwestern just to give them, you know, to kind of show their support for him. They, he Apparently he texted all of them after their win. I mean, this guy is still very much ingrained with this team. They really, really cared about him. They really trusted him. Yeah, and so, because they really, really care about him, they're not going to forget about the lessons that he taught him while they're there. And I'm sure one of those lessons was when the going gets tough, you stick together as a team. And that's what this Indiana Hoosiers team is going to do. So, I mean, but, but legitimately now, they have Final Four potential. But can they really get there? I mean, give me a percentage. How, how, how good of a chance do they have of getting to the Final Four? Um, I'd say maybe a 40% a chance of getting to the Final Four. I'm not saying that they're an elite team, but I'm saying that they are going to go every bit as far as they should go because they're going to stick together as a team. Even though they don't have Calvin Sampson? Even though. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. For Dan Fiedler, I'm Daphne Pepinitas. Keep checking back with Cal TV, your download for What's Up in Cal Sports.